one. All right. I'm, okay. We are live. Uh, nobody has joined us yet. This is Torstein, Torstein Fidel, and he is in Norway. And I am Sandy Shellis, and I am in the southern tier of western New York. And uh, we're going to have a really good conversation, but we've got to build an audience. And that is the one thing, Torstein, when you do a live interview like this, it takes a little bit to get the audience built up. And uh, we are live on several Facebook pages, except I forgot to send it to, um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to share it right now to the Arctic I Sea Ice page. I didn't do that. <laughs> Let me do that really quickly while we're waiting and people, people, um, okay, people will see it. Okay. Group Arctic A, Arctic Sea, Arctic Sea. Okay. Arctic Sea Ice. I did that. Okay, we've got some people, and uh, I have to shut this off. Okay. So, who's with us? Anybody want to say who's with us? Okay, Rebecca's with us, and Cindy's with us. Good. So, we're going to start building an audience. This is great. All right, we're going. Now, Torstein, if you can get that light on your face, it would be wonderful so everybody can see you. Yuck. Okay. See, look at him. He looks he looks terrific. He's in Norway and it's dark there. And I want to tell you all right now that where I am, we are going through a thunderstorm and there's lightning and I could not get my battery back up to hook up with my modem. So if we lose you by any chance, my friends, we're going to have to either, you know, come back and I would say you'd give it a half an hour and we would try to do this again. Hopefully I won't lose you, but where I live, the power is terrible. Um, it goes off and I, I don't have a generator. I don't have anything hooked up. So, <sighs> Torstein, welcome to Environmental Coffee House. I couldn't be happier. So uh, I want you to take it away and uh, give us a little bit about you. Thank you. Um, you know, I've just been uh, able to, to shake these uh, rainforest fever fevers, so I'm very, and break, break on through to the other side, so I'm very humbled and very happy to be, be able to be here and oh. talk to you, yeah. Well, we're very happy to have you. What, uh, what we'd like to know, I don't know if everybody can hear the thunder and lightning, um, oh, wait, I got to put up this because my friend... Kim is with us and see what she says. Can you see the, the screen? Can you see? Uh, She's, she is welcoming you. Uh, maybe, no. She's welcoming you. She's well, welcoming I can't you. see Oh, okay. No, sorry. I'm sorry, Kim, you can't see it. Um, but we have a lot of people joining us and, and we're building it up. So, okay, Torstein, Tor you were talking to me in our email about the 1980s. And you were telling me about, um, you know, your your feelings about um, everything that's going on in this uh, in this world uh, ecologically. So, how did you get interested? How did you get started to become this person who now understands about the Arctic and the ice and and all the things that are going on? Yeah, I think we can, uh, uh, you know, start in the 80s. Okay. 1989. So, um, I was 18 years old, and I was uh, living in my uh, grandfather's uh, apartment in Bergen. And I was working in his uh, shirt shop. Shirt shop? Mm-hmm. Okay. In, uh, in that, uh, minding his shop uh, while the in Oh, this is not going to work. This, uh, he and my grandmother were there. Mm -hmm. And then I was uh, working there for a couple of weeks to, to, to earn some money for going on uh, environmental youth summer camp, you know? Oh, since you were a kid. Yeah. Yeah, 18. So I was sitting mm -hmm. there in, the, in the, that, you know, and I was uh, writing pets to my... Uh, future girlfriend mm -hmm. <laughs> over in the east but mm -hmm. then you know you had um, what the guy McPherson I mentioned the other day yes you have Sky and uh, Noel Brown 
from uh, New York United Nations office in New York out and okay. be broadcast uh, about the uh, plan. All right, we're we're having a little trouble hearing you. If you can say that All again, right. say that again yeah. about. Yeah, here, Noel Brown from uh, New York. Uh, mm -hmm. You uh, he would go uh, go uh, to Norwegian media. We can't put me on because I can't see. And say you. that he had only. All right. Okay. All right. See if you can you move over just a tiny little bit to the other side. Like this? Yeah, because then we can see each other. Yeah, okay. Let's okay. see if it works. So in the 1980s, you got interested in this, and I'm still I'm still covering your face, so I'm not no, even going to come on this. All right, so in the 1980s, it was you were a kid. You were young, and this was something that you were really interested in, is the in the environment. Yeah, I met because we had had the... Two green winters in a row, 1989 and 1990. They were okay. both green winters in Norway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so it was a big deal. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, already there, our, they started promising, you know, to do something about climate. Back uh, in the 80s. Back in the 80s, they started. Yeah. They started uh, you know, they broke their climate. promises and they mm -hmm. kept on lying. And, <gasps> you know, if you start lying about something and you keep on lying the next decade and then the next decade and then the next decade, what do you end up with? And so a, a big lie. But you felt, so you felt that uh, in your country. Uh, go ahead. We're having a little difficulty hearing you. You end up with the Paris Climate Agreement, which is a big, uh, a big lies. Yeah. You know? Oh, we're having such a trouble hearing you. I don't know why this is happening. Okay. I don't know why. I'm getting like every other word. Uh, okay, so we went to the 80s. I'm trying to decipher. We went from the 80s, and now we, we come to, you're, you're all the way up from your childhood. You feel like you're hearing people not telling you the truth, and that's what, in the science community? No, you broke up there. Okay, it was people not telling you the truth in the science community? Is that what it was? Oh, put it. Politicians, politicians. Oh. Okay, politicians, just like here. Okay. Uh, so global then... agreements to try about uh, climate policies, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been just going on and on and on and on. It's never stopped. They never meant anything. That... So that's how you yeah. felt. Nothing's ever. It's not how I feel. It's not how I feel. You can just, just they broke all their promises. You know, mm -hmm. everyone, so. What were some of the promises? You know, to reduce the emissions of carbon dioxide, for mm -hmm. instance. Okay. Yeah. So, climate agreement, it's not even an agreement. You know, it's, it doesn't, it's not, it's not within the definition of an agreement. It's just, you know, a piece of paper with no obligations for anyone. So it's right. Like, Nothing. Well, okay. So let me ask you a question then. If we if we were going to do an agreement that was going to have teeth, mm -hmm. what, in your estimation, would you have wanted to see? What would uh, you, like? you know, just the uh, alchemy, for instance. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll have to say that Email. again. I'm sorry, guys. We're having such trouble. <laughs> say it again. I'm sorry. Oh, you, we will, you would have to outlaw the oil and gas in the first. Okay, I get it. And, uh, so basically, and the airline industry. Yeah. Basically, back in the 80s, 
they would have had to, the governments yeah. would have had to start doing something serious then and listening to the scientists then. You know, just uh, not start lying. Just right. started lying about uh, doing something. 30 okay. years, just lying about some uh, promises to do something mm -hmm. sometime, you know. But your country is pretty, uh, well, you drill and you, you drill for oil and gas, but within the country itself, you, uh, the Norway is pretty green, is it not? No. Oh, can you hear me? It's just amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Norway. Mm. Norway is very behind when it comes to realizing climate change, you know. Uh, and what, up in Svalbard, mm -hmm. where they are going to store seeds to save the whole uh, planet from uh, catastrophe. You know? Yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, tell us about that whole seed. Yeah, thing. so so they built. Mm -hmm. It's the built. It's, it's been it's been uh, up now for eight or nine years, and it's okay. already leaking water from uh, thawing from permafrost. It's leaking into the vault, knocking mm -hmm. out power, so the cooling system is knocked out, and you have rain. In the water, because they said that the they're actually climate deniers in in the government, because this is owned by the government, the, the, the whole seed vault thing. Okay, so you're Trump, saying Trump is, uh, by the deniers. Yeah. You're saying that there's climate deniers in the Norwegian government that are, even though you you took all this effort to make a seed vault. Yeah. That they, they don't believe that this really is um, necessary. Is that what you're saying? No, they, they, they didn't plan for rain on Svalbard. Oh, no? okay. Okay, can you tell us about the permafrost then? Give us the science behind permafrost and how this was supposed to be forever. Yeah, it's... Uh, when... I'm so upset. They sold the idea. Can you hear me? No. Well, Sometimes. That's a very safe place to have uh, seeds because you, you had permafrost guaranteeing some kind of cooling mechanism okay. for the uh, seeds. Mm -hmm. uh, but that didn't work because, you know, when they built it with diggers and bulldozers and things. Can't hear you repeat. Uh, the the ground didn't. And then to the two to. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it never froze. Uh, so, so we're having such a difficult time hearing you. So have you actually been there? Have you been to the seed vault? No, I haven't. You haven't, but you've been to the Arctic. Uh, not really. Huh? All right. Then you got to give me the backstory about how yeah, you are. Uh, give me the story about how you are so knowledgeable and know everything about this. Because I know you do. You were in the page and you work with these the climate scientists. That's why we're here. Yeah, but you know it's it's very humbling to read the the reads by you know real climate experts. So it's like yeah, the first one or two years when you're into that thing. You're just uh, sort of just very humbled by so how much everybody knows about it, and you know I don't didn't feel I knew anything, you know. So uh... how, how did you not know anything? Yeah, how did you not know, and how did you learn? Because all of us that are trying to learn about climate and climate change, that's the key. How did you learn? It's a, learning, it's a learning, it's a learning, learning process. So you, you, I, I use the, you know, learning by doing. And doing what? You know that. But 
I started with was to, but, you know, what's this about? Is it, you know, is it volume or thickness or area, you know, all, all these things. Uh, mm -hmm. So you have to, I, I just went into it and read mm. what the other people said and, and where the sources are. Can you hear me at all? <laughs> yeah, somewhat, but it's it's skipping off. I don't know if we're going to lose people or if they're going to stay, but we're trying. Mm. We're trying. We have people here that are staying and they're listening. They're trying. So basically, this is all your all that you have experienced is by learning from others. Correct? Or is it university learning? It's trying to um trying to uh, figure out uh, how fast in ice, you know, and then... How, how fast it's melting. Graphs showing, and that's a very steep learning curve in a way. Okay. And, um, okay. The moment you uh, present your first graph, you get uh, 100 angry comments, you know, oh, you can't do that, you know. Oh, I see. Okay. So basically, not, uh, legal to do that. but you work with climate scientists. You're working with climate scientists. No, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm working with a manuscript for my. Uh, uh, so You're working on a manuscript this for. Is, uh, this climate stuff is just. No. So it's just started as I found out that I'd stumbled upon a, a so-called mega story, you know, it's a oh. big story that is important for everybody who lives on the planet. So it's like, uh, you can't just do some research and write a book. So that's really how it started. It's because... Exactly. It's a bigger story than that. Okay. So you're actually writing up the book on what's happening in the Arctic. And because of all that is how you're, you're, you've gotten to be proficient and you understand the climate science. So you can tell us a little about that. I can't uh, even hear you. A, <laughs> you have to know, is this a hundred year thing or a 10 year thing? You know, how, how soon? I'm sorry, going? guys. You know what, Torsten? This is really difficult because it's not. We're, we're getting half of the story, and I know we're missing what's what the meat is. And I'm I'm disappointed because uh, this connection is so bad, and I don't know why. Does this happen to you often? All right. Does it happen to you often where the connection is so bad? I'm not so often on on. I don't understand. Well, how about my friends out there that are watching? Chat, so I can't, can't tell, really. Are you guys having a very difficult time? Yeah, Kim, is, it's frustrating. We're having a frustrating time. I'm so upset because your story is compelling. And it, it is because you, you understand all this stuff. And I know you do. You, you're running a page. You're working with these scientists, but it's because you're writing a book. But what we wanted to know was a little bit about the science for the lay person. To tell us. So what would you tell me who knows nothing about the ice, nothing about the, the, the temperature, degrees, or any of it? Yeah, I would like to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, my my buddy Paul Beckwith? Yes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to cry. He, uh, he, he, used, uh, he called it the... the uh, the Arctic is the, the fridge of the planet, you know? Can you say that again? The what of the planet? Oh. Yeah. <sighs> no, I didn't hear it. Did anybody hear it? No. But you work with Paul. Paul, we're going to interview on Monday. And Paul, I don't think, Paul's fridge. in Canada. So it shouldn't be too hard. Repeat that. Say that again. No, I was trying to, to, to tell you about the fridge metaphor, you know, the, the, the Arctic is cooling down uh, the planet, like a, free, a refrigerator in your kitchen is cooling down your food, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
right? When we get and somewhere. The, the <laughs> important, what we are looking at this summer is to have one day without the fridge working, you know? One, one day. day. Yeah. Uh, and what I'm looking at in my uh, work is... Yes. That's what I want to get to. Unfortunately, when will we have an, an entire year without uh, the fridge working? All right, wait a second. It's raining so much here that I have to close the window. Okay, all right, everybody, we're back. I, I appreciate everybody sticking with us because this is like trying to um, decipher another language. Uh, we know, t so Torstein, Torstein, you've said you're working with. Paul and you're working with others to write a book and up in the Arctic, it's like a refrigerator that's going to shut yeah. off. But for what? Yeah. You said one day. One day. We, we're looking at one day or one week of shutdown. Of oh. The fridge, uh, refrigerator this summer. Uh, today. There's no, it's no crisis. But uh, it's a crisis when you have an entire year, 365 days, with no refrigerator. And that and is it's what... It's a good metaphor, because uh, uh, what, what, what would you do for... You don't have shops, you don't have a refrigerator, you don't have electricity. That's going to be a tough time for everybody. But this is... So, but why? Why is this going to happen? What's the science behind it? I'm sorry. I'm lots so disappointed. Things, okay. You know, you have lots of uh, telling me. Uh, we what? Say that again. It's a nice thing that you tell me when I'm not uh, coming through. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if this is going to work another time, but we're going to, we'll just keep trying. We've got people that are staying and they're, we're trying to understand so the refrigerator is the Arctic. Yeah. And the refrigerator is going to turn off. For one day or one week this For summer. For one day or one week, one week. This, this summer. Mm hmm Why? And I think everyone knows. The, our listeners, they can uh, live without, and then it's back, back on again, you know. But then uh, Paul Beckwith and I, we have both found out that uh, it will only take less than a decade before you have the first. Oh, the first what? Say it again. The first. Sure. Say it again. The the first... ice. Okay. Year of no ice and no refrigerator cooling down. Ten years, you say ten years before we have no, no, um. Oh yeah, uh, Paul, Paul says it will take less. Less than that. What do you say from your experience that you've learned? One decade from the first. Yeah, my apps uh, kind of say it will take maybe half a decade, you know, but uh, that's just experimental. So I can't, I can't guarantee anything. Okay. Now, all right. I want to go back to your book. A little bit. So you're writing a book and yep. what do you want to communicate to us with the book? Interesting question We're trying. because when I started thinking about it, mm -hmm. I'm going to write this book mm -hmm. that is going to make everybody understand how serious this climate stuff is. Oh, okay. You, but, and you, then, uh, but then I realized that um, no, this is no, no, that won't work. And it's sort of uh, start uh, recycling or to start uh, bicycling, or because it's already in the works, you know. So you're you're saying that in your experience learning and working with scientists that it's gone too far to reverse the arctic to stop oh boy is it thundering here to stop 
The, can you hear it, anybody? Yeah. I, I don't it. know. Um, right. So to stop that refrigerator from turning off, you're saying that that can't happen. Paul calls it the death rattle of the of the refrigerator, you know? The death it's, rattle. It's rattling and said. it's stopping, you know? It's the, the old, noisy, old fridge is stopping and it's, it's stopping. Okay. going. So what... Okay, I guess everybody has the question then. Kaput. What is it going to... Yeah, but what's kaput? So, you know, we're trying to understand what is, in your estimation, what's kaput? Broke. Okay, so here we go. The refrigerator stops. We're trying to get this, you know, your your get you in. The refrigerator breaks, comes back on, maybe, yeah. right? Comes back on. Tell us about then the the effect. What's the effect? Yeah, uh, I think it's been a bit uh, exaggerated how how big a big a deal it is to to ju just lose the Arctic for one day. I don't think that's very serious, but it's uh, the seriosity of it is that it's a. Dis <sighs> Two thousand this okay. a decade or half decade trip down. So we to... just missed half of that. No, all right. What part? We missed. <laughs> we missed pretty much half of that. So the seriousness of it has been exaggerated. So in other words, when somebody like Guy McPherson says, "We're done," we're not yeah. done. Yeah, because. Uh... Well, guys. <laughs> you know, Guy McPherson is a very smart guy, but, uh, okay. you know, uh, that, you know, our whole uh, life is going to break down because we lose the refrigerator for one day. That's, That's not going to happen. That's, that won't happen. Yeah. Uh... We, have, we have some time, but, but it's going to be very, very rough for us when we lose all year ice in the Arctic. We had no ref refrigeration no of our food. So you're so. How is that going to? Um, no. uh, all right, Torstein. How does this? Since we're having such a shitty time trying to talk about this, I can't believe that this is not. I, you know, we're having such a difficult time. I just want to understand. The refrigerator goes off. It comes back on. How is it going to come back on? How does that affect us in the United States or in Norway? Is it the water levels? You know, what are what is it? What is it? I think everybody wants to know. What is expect? You know, what is it exactly? When you lose. Ugh. No. So, you know, crazy winds, crazy storms, crazy floodings, crazy droughts, and it's like... <laughs> I'm going to cry. Well, How are this... you going to make... How are we going to make <laughs> electricity? Uh, I can barely... All right, so, so the, the world, the planet, because of this, we're going to have critically crazy weather. Let's see. Yeah. All right, Marsha, what are you, Marsha's saying, he's saying it's going to be rough, but then the seriousness of it is exaggerated. Does that sound a bit like what you said? I don't think Torstein can hear us now. He's frozen. Well, you know, my friends, I will tell you, yeah, you guys. The first, oh. first day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So. No. You know what, Torstein? We've given it the best try, but this is so difficult. I cannot hear you. Let's see. Let me, let me see what Rochelle, Rochelle says. Maybe the gentleman would have an article or a website or something that I could post after the live feed for us. So where would you, where would you tell us to go? Um, or should I wait for Paul's interview on Monday to continue this line of questioning? Just uh, just go to the Arctic Sea Ice Group. Okay, but, you know, I go to the Arctic Sea Ice Group and I find it difficult to understand those articles and those graphs. That's why I wanted you to 
explain to us a little bit more in um, layman's terms, you know, uh, yep. since you work with it and you are obviously self-taught working with scientists, which is amazing. It's almost like you're, 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 um, you're just, you've absorbed it all. We wanted you to tell us, I like the refrigerator analogy. I do. Yeah, that's, that's Paul's analogy, so okay. it's not mine. All right, but still you're telling us, and then we're going to have Paul on Monday, and Paul's in Canada, guys, so it's not going to be bad. We're not going to lose Paul. This is yeah, difficult. Maybe. I mean, you know, go ahead, Torstein. Whatever you can say that we can hear. Yeah, maybe you could, uh, maybe you could ask, uh, maybe you could ask, maybe. Maybe you could ask Paul about the refrigerator. You okay. Froze. All right. So I'm going to change the line of questioning then a little bit. Yeah. I go to the Arctic sea ice page mm -hmm. and I'm lost because I don't know exactly how to understand the, you know, the, 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 the measurements and all that. What is the easiest way for me to start understanding the, the things I'm reading? Or all of us that are not, you know, like you or like, you know, um, Amplify Greens here. Is that you, Aaron? I don't know who Amplify Greens is, but Paul has good analogies. So we are definitely going to, we're going to have a good one with Paul, but when we go to the page, how how do we get the most out of it, Torstein? <laughs> He's trying. Okay. I'll, okay. You're, you know, often and uh, and learn something. Well, you know what, Torstein, we gave it a really good try. Every day, uh, <sighs> suddenly, just wow, you know. You just get it. You just get it. So we go to the page and we, let me see if anybody, well, thank you for getting the word out about the important issues. I'm not getting much of a word out of anything out of Torstein because I can't hear him. <laughs> oh, Torstein, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I can see your face. I know we can see your face, but we can't hear you. So uh, I don't know. I don't know sign language. Does anybody have anything that? Oh, Sandra. There's a girl named Sandra Tetnowski, and Sandra wants to tell you she loves you. <laughs> okay. Well, so she uh, must. She must know you from the um, from the page. Well, this has been a good try. I have to say, it's been a good try because what, what it was about you was that you're not a PhD. You, that's why I wanted to have you because you've learned all this and absorbed it by interest since, a kid, since you were a kid, right? And you're educated, but you're going to write a book to let us all understand what's going on, but you don't feel like like um like guy you don't you don't say as uh jim morrison of the door says it is the end <laughs> can you do yes that no no break no. on through to the other side yeah or the yeah. end you know he said but it, you don't think it's the end is that We're the same song no, I was thinking it was a different song, but it doesn't matter because so human species is going to have to withhold. We're going to have to live through as a species, horrible weather yep. changes, a lot of calamities, a lot of death, a lot of stuff, but we're going to, we can come out the other side. Yeah, we'll be able so. to breathe. We'll be able to breathe. What about the methane that they talk about underneath the Arctic? Yeah. <sighs> well, I'm going to put something up from Rochelle. Try, try <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, guys, 
we've, you know, Torstein, I've tried my hardest. We've lost some people because this is, I don't know if it's your end or my end. I know we have terrible weather here. I, I wish, do you, you want to try and say something before uh, we, we end this? Because it's just not working. Interesting to be on and be live with you, and uh, hopefully we can uh, maybe have some better connection some other time. Yeah, when are you coming to the United States? <laughs> that would be, that would be uh, about the best. I don't know. Have you ever done this before on uh, Be Live? Yeah. No. Can you hear me? I don't think so. No, well, not for me, live. No, but usually you're the the things that happen are not live. See, this is live, so of course we're all going through this live. If this was a video, we could edit it and try to get all the good pieces in where we could hear you, <laughs> but we can't hear you at all. So I think I'm going to let you go. But um, we tried, and everybody go to the Arctic Sea Ice page. Try to understand. Okay. Yeah. Try to understand. Torstein, thank you so much. I'm just going to talk to my um, loyal, wonderful followers <laughs> a little bit before we go. And uh, just want them to know that I will let you know what time we're going to have Paul back with on Monday. And Paul does work with Torstein. But Torstein's writing the book. Right, Torstein? <laughs> I had so many things I wanted to understand, but, um, well, especially the fact that Torstein is not a PhD, that he would talk to us in our own language, like the refrigerator's going off, you know, for a couple of days. That's why I wanted you, because you're one of us. We're not PhDs. <sighs> well, I've got a lot of, um, anyway, everybody says they're kissing you and thank you so much. He's kissing back. I'm going to say goodnight, everybody, because it's not working. Good night, Torstein. Thank you. You can, you can, you're going to oh, let you hang up. Thank you very up. much, Sunday. All right, sweetheart. We're going to try something else another time. All right, guys. Thank you. All right, Rochelle, let's put up. You, you have some stuff. Oh, you have some stuff. His, okay. His interview with Extinction Radio. Great. I'm very sorry. I don't know why this happened because when we first hooked up, I could hear him, you know, for a couple of minutes. But then again, like I said, we're having a horrible storm here. And uh, in fact, I was so worried about that storm. I pulled out my um, handy dandy. If you're not going anywhere, we might as well talk. I'm not going to be able to use the video, really. Battery charger. And then I realized I can't use it on my modem because it won't fit. So if we, we, you know, we, I, I had anticipated losing power because where I live, being a little municipality, every time we get a storm, every time we do lose power. So anyway, Rochelle's here, Marsh is here. It was, it was a really good try, but I guess what we can take out of this is we'll hear from Paul on Monday that it's not necessarily the end. But we have a rough ride ahead of us and that our children are probably going to be the ones that have to adapt. And there's the science of mitigation and adaptation. That's partly what Torstein's involved in, the science of ad adaptation and mitigation, I believe. You know, so, oh, Rochelle, it's pouring up there, too. So I guess we might as well just have a little talk. Um Maybe that's what affecting, you know, it could be, but you guys are not having any trouble hearing me, right? No? Oh, well. <sighs> I was going to go back out and re-garden, <laughs> but it is. I mean, we're talking, we're having some thunder and lightning. Thank you very much, everybody. Is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? I'll look, I'll put it up and we can, anything? Just come back Monday for Paul Beckwith. It should be good. And then after that, Actually, uh, oh, there's a there's a delay. Oh, Paul Jones is on. Hi, Paul. You missed Torstein, but you know what? We couldn't. He's in Norway, and the connection was really, really bad. 
Um, Paul back with Monday. After that, I've got a gentleman, a guy, great guy named Joseph. Um, and he's coming from Green Life, which is a new, uh, his business. And we're going to have an interview with uh, Joseph D. Giamo because he's fantastic. You guys are going to love him. I use his, um, from his farm. He opened an organic farm in Long Island, New York. Believe it or not, one acre organic farm. And I use his, um, his, it's called, um, bomb bomb. And I'm really hurting person and it takes, it's natural and it's actually working to mitigate some of the pain. So it's pretty good. So Joseph is going to come after Paul and he's going to be a very welcome, uh, addition to environmental coffee house interviewing coffers, so to speak. And we have a whole bunch of videos up on the YouTube. I finally got it. And uh, we're going to be um, maybe even trying YouTube. I don't know. I might try a live stream on YouTube, see how, how it works. Because uh, all this Facebook jazz, who knows? We don't know what the future holds. So we're doing that. And then we're building a website, too. And hello, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I'm glad Daniel's here. He says, sounds good. See, Daniel, if you, if you were here earlier, you would have heard Torstein say a different thing than what Guy McPherson said, because the science is not a hundred percent that everybody's saying the same thing. But of course, we all know, you know, we have to buckle up and we know that we've got to do things. And if we're all political, we all know that we got to get rid of 45 and we got to work for 2018 for progressives and, 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 and our values, because that's what's going to change things. If the, if it's not too late to change our progressive values are what is going to save our planet. I firmly believe it. We need to start a progressive wave throughout the whole world. And uh, I will. Okay, what did Erica? Take a look at Erica's live stream via PAP. She's very much on the same page. Um, I am, and yep, I know PIP is wonderful. And I may go, may go to the PIP um, conference. I'm not sure yet. There's also a, democ a democracy convention going on in Minneapolis. But I have so many things going on. High school reunion in July. Then right after that would be the democracy convention. I don't think I'm going to be able to make that one. Then my brother's getting married in New York. And then would be Seattle for PIP. Who knows? You know, I don't even know if I can afford all these things. So anyway, uh, Marcia, that's nice of you. Thank you. I will. You know, I know Araquel personally. So we're friends and we, we actually met in Philly. She's a wonderful person. And uh, I will say PIP has one of the best environmental stances I've ever read. It is so good. I did a whole live stream on it. And um, Marcia says that, yeah, there's a convention. And Kim, are you going to go to the, de the, the democracy um, uh, the democracy convention? Yeah, there's a Seattle convention, uh, Marsha. Let's see. And then, um, oh boy, and then there's a green meeting. You know what? This is what I would like. If I could put on wings and be a bird and fly to everything, I would. I don't mind flying in a plane, but it uses a lot of, you know, gas, fuel. And we still have to do that. But anyway, nobody wants to see me leave me tonight. <laughs> It's great. I'm looking outside at, an, at like this intense thunderstorm. So, but uh, my favorite girls are here. <laughs> I told Torstein, I said, you know, Torstein, I have a lot of female followers, but um, I don't think this, this particular live stream is going to make YouTube, <laughs> but this has been fun. It has been fun. And uh, it, it was nice to hear him try to tell us in his terms being that he's not a PhD, he's self-taught. That's why I wanted him because we can all learn. And Kim, if you're 25 minutes south of Seattle and I get to go to that one, well, we might get to see each other. So we'll see. I know I have to give an answer about the uh, one in Minnesota very fast. And uh, I will be doing my homework tonight. So uh, everybody, 
thank you for coming and trying to hear Torstein. <sighs> that was the thing I liked was that he's not a PhD and he learned all of this by himself and he runs a page on Arctic ice and he understands all the measurements and he understands all the graphs. And really that was what I wanted to talk about in layman's terms, like he did, you know, as the Arctic is a refrigerator that might go off for a couple of days, but maybe not forever. So we'll see what Paul says on Monday. Okay. So look, everybody have, oh yeah. Kim's like, yeah, we're hooking up. <laughs> I'd love to go. We'll see. We'll see if I could get my brother from Oregon to come with me. That would be great too. All right, guys. Thursday night. Peace out. Thank you for coming. And we tried, right? We tried. Mwah! I love you all. Good night, guys. Thanks. Doesn't seem to want to end. Ha, ha, ha.